TCL of China announced that it will start production of OLED TV using printing method instead of vacuum deposition method in 2023. And a 65-inch size 8K resolution TV was on display. It was a shocking announcement that Japan's Sony and Panasonic jointly invested and established JOLED's technology to produce high-efficiency OLED TVs using RGB printing method, but with some doubts about its feasibility. Is it really possible to produce an OLED TV that requires far superior durability compared to mobile phones with a relatively simple printing method? And can the printing method threaten the existing OLED TV? Today, we will look at the advantages and limitations of printing type OLED, and the applicability of it to TV applications. Let's start the tech trip. Compared to the conventional deposition method, the printing method can use a relatively simple process from various viewpoints. In the deposition process, a large glass substrate is placed on the upper part of the evaporator and deposition proceeds while transferring the substrate. Placing a heavy 8.5 generation substrate on top also causes the glass substrate to sag. If the glass substrate cannot withstand gravity and falls to the floor, the equipment must be stopped for a long time. On the other hand, the printing method places the substrate on the bottom of the printer equipment. Then, the inkjet head injects ink into the pre-patterned pixels, while precisely changing the position of the substrate after slightly floating the glass substrate from the bottom by spraying nitrogen gas from under the substrate. Since the method of injecting liquid ink containing OLED material into a designated pixel is used, the size of the substrate is relatively free to expand compared to the method of placing the substrate on the upper part of the equipment and depositing the OLED material from the bottom. In addition, unlike the vacuum deposition process, ink is injected only at the designated location, so the consumption of materials is low. In the past, the precision of inkjet heads was low, but with continued research and development, it became possible to precisely control extremely small ink droplets equivalent to several picoliters, enabling precise ink injection into very small subpixels. As a result, 4K resolution implementation is possible even with a small panel size. So far, only the advantages of inkjet printing have been listed, but let's compare the performance with the OLED panel produced by the RGB vacuum deposition method, which is the most similar in device structure. OLED display used in mobile phone is manufactured by vacuum deposition method to form RGB subpixel using fine metal mask. When depositing organic material on each subpixel corresponding to RGB, the deposition proceeds while replacing the fine metal mask accordingly. The deposition process is carried out while the glass substrate is transported by a robot arm within the equipment consisting of a number of vacuum chambers for the process that requires such precision. And, similar to the printing method announced by TCL, the top emission method in which light emits upwards on the glass substrate is adopted. The fact that each subpixel of RGB has a multi-layered structure is also similar to each other. By optimizing the thickness of each layer, the width of the emission spectrum is made narrow and the color gamut is increased. Therefore, it can be considered that comparing the two is the most appropriate and reasonable method to find out the performance difference between the vacuum deposition method and the printing method. In order to apply the printing method, the material used must be dissolved in water or organic solvent, so the molecular structure must be modified to secure solubility. In addition, in order to create a multi-layer structure, the layer of the material formed first should not be dissolved again when the material formed next is sprayed by an inkjet printer head as a solution. Due to these limitations, the selection of materials used is narrowed, and thus, the efficiency and lifespan are inferior to those for vapor deposition. Also, for this reason, the price of the material itself is much higher than the material used in the deposition method. The advantage of low material consumption is therefore completely lost. Printing type OLED has been able to realize a considerably higher level of resolution than in the past due to the continuous development of inkjet heads. The level that has been reached is possible with a resolution of about 100 to 250 pixels per inch, that is, about 200 ppi. As shown in the table, only 68 ppi and 135 ppi are required to secure 4K and 8K resolution in the 65-inch panel size, so the printing method can be applied sufficiently. 
Therefore, the printing method has sufficient competitiveness in terms of resolution to enter the TV market where OLED is currently expanding. Unlike TCL's ambitious announcement, the possibility of entering the TV market by printing method is close to zero for now. The reason is much simpler than you might think. There is no major problem in the process, but there is a problem with the lifespan. It also has a very critical problem. Now, let's think about it together. When Samsung manufactures QD OLED, it uses deposition type blue OLED, and its structure consists of three stacked blue elements. So, why does Samsung use three stack for QD OLED, which requires such a long process? Although the panel can be completed even with one layer of blue OLED and quantum dots formed on it. The reason is the longevity. If the OLED device is repeatedly formed three times in a three stack method, the lifetime will increase by more than five times at the same brightness. Because each stack connected in series emits light by dividing the amount of current injected into the display by one third, the lifespan of each stack is greatly increased. This is because the lifespan is inversely proportional to the amount of injected current, and when the amount of current is halved, the lifespan increases by more than three times. Therefore, RGB type OLED for mobile phone that uses only one stack cannot be used for TV, because its lifespan is greatly reduced. However, while the deposition method can freely increase the number of stacks when forming OLED devices, the printing method unfortunately can make only a single stack. The reason is that an intermediate electrode made of metal must be formed between each stack, and such a process cannot be performed because the metallic materials are not soluble in solution. Unlike cell phones and monitors, TVs have a very long average daily usage time, and consumers want to use the TV for as long as possible when purchasing one. If a printing OLED TV with a single stack structure is used at the same brightness as a white OLED TV currently on the market, it will surely face a serious burn-in phenomenon within two years. Groups pursuing the printing OLED method claim that they can produce TVs about 20% cheaper than the existing OLED TVs. Are you willing to purchase a printing type OLED TV that has serious burn-in within two years? That's it for today. Goodbye.